today I want to talk to you about misplaced and dangling modifiers. What is a misplaced or dangling modifier? Perhaps you got that comment on a paper. Misplaced words and phrases in English. Well, you see, in English we have a rule that an adjective or adverb uh, uh, modifies or describes the word by appearing right next to it. That is, an adjective or adverb is right beside either the noun or the verb that it modifies. If you separate the modifier or the adjective or adverb, if you separate it from the word that it modifies or it describes, uh, it leads to confusing or unintended meanings. Example, having finished her assignment, Mary turned on the TV. And what we have here, the doer of the action is Mary. Mary turned on the TV. This is a complete sentence, a good sentence. There is no misplaced modifier. Mary is the name of the person that finished her assignment, turned on the TV. It's a logical, regular, everyday, proper English sentence. In the next sentence, though, Having finished her assignment, the TV was turned on, and you could say by Mary, but it would still be an error because, you see, having finished her assignment, the next word should be the doer of the action. It should be Mary. The next word should be the doer of the action. So what we have is the TV... <laughs> The TV no way could uh, have finished Mary's assignment, so we have a misplaced modifier. TV sets can't finish assignments, and so uh, this is one of those uh, problematic sentences. And what we have to do is we have to correct it by putting uh, uh, Mary next to the TV. Here's another example. After reading the original study, the article remained unconvincing. Once again, you have the same problem here because we have after reading the original study, there's the description, the next word should be the name of the person who read the original study. But instead we have the article. The article it can no way read itself, so it's a dangling or misplaced a modifier. It's a dangling modifier. Uh, how we could fix it? We could put, after reading the original study, I find the article unconvincing, or he, or Tom, or name a person, but it should be the doer of the action, should be the very next word. Uh, another example here. A woman passed by leading a Springer Spaniel in a long black dress. Uh, this is, uh, your English teachers would laugh at this sentence. We would find this quite humorous because we have a woman leading a dog in a dress is what it sounds like. It sounds like the dog is wearing the dress. Uh, but uh, what it is really, the woman leading the dog. So we have to change the sentence around a little. Here's one way we could fix it. A woman and then put in the black dress, because the woman's wearing the dress, not the dog, passed by leading a Springer Spaniel. This uh, makes sense. The next one. After trying the combination several times, the lock finally opened. Well, it, it, this is a misplaced modifier because it's a dangling modifier, uh, because it sounds like the lock is opening uh, the combination, trying the combination, but it's impossible for the lock to do that. So you need to add in a subject or you need to change the sentence around. And here's how you could fix it. After trying the combination several times, he finally unlocked the door. He or she or it or Tom or Mary, but it should be a person that tried the combination and unlocked the door. The next one, disappointed that vacation would soon end, September came too quickly. Well, it, it sounded like September is a person. <laughs> Some people call their children September, but this is not one of those instances 
They actually mean the month here. And so it, it, September can no way be the doer of the action. So it's a dangling modifier. Instead, disappointed that vacation would soon end, he felt September came too quickly. So the doer of the action, he's the one that his vacation was over soon. He felt September came too quickly. That is a resolution to, the, uh, to that uh, issue. Uh, the next one here. Uh, here is the, the thing to beware of. Uh, usually people that write dangling modifiers is because you're starting your sentence uh, uh, with the modifier and maybe it, you're not really revising to say is the doer of the action right next to the action. They frequently appear at the beginning of sentences but they could also be at the end. Here, here is an example and I want you to take a minute and try to solve this one on your own the experiment was a failure not having studied the lab manual. Here it is. It's a dangling modifier. How could you fix it? The experiment was a failure not having studied the lab manual. The experiment was a failure not having studied the lab manual. Well, we, you, there's no way that the experiment could study this lab manual. So we need to add in they, the subject, not having studied the lab manual. Notice I've got it inserted inside because it describes they. So they didn't study the lab manual, so they failed the experiment. So uh, that's a resolution to that. So the, the rule for you to remember, if you have dangling modifiers marked on your papers or if you know that you're committing them, the rule to remember is that modifiers or adjectives and adverbs, and that includes phrases as well as just words, always go next to the word that they modify in English. I hope this is helpful to you. All the best to you.